Hello, everyone. I'm Dominique. And I'm Christina. And we are the Connected in Glass podcast. Every week, we will feature interviews with glass artists who speak to their creative processes and overcoming challenges. These conversations are real and raw. We hope that by sharing these stories, you're able to find some connection and know that you're not alone. Today, we have a bonus episode to share with you of a follow-up interview with Tegan Hamilton. We interviewed her in season two before Blown Away premiered. We're grateful that she spent some more time with us now that she's able to talk about her experience. It's so incredible to see how many people just have no idea about glass blowing. I think that's one of the things that Blown Away has done is really kind of pushed it a little bit more to the forefront. I was um, blowing glass yesterday at the Gordons and I was just working along and I was like, oh, have you seen, um, have you seen glass blowing before? And they're like, oh, yeah, we just watched Blown Away. And I was like, oh yeah. Which season? They recognize season? you? No. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I was like, which season? Season two? Oh yeah, right. Oh. Any Australians on there? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so I love your new little bear series that came out. That was so good. Did it sell really well? Yeah, I've sold a few. Um, it's the kind of sales are dribbling in slowly, which is really lovely. Um, I had, you know, a lot of people, I think it resonated with them. Um can talk about it now isn't that fun last time we I was talked just I thinking that I'm like, was I have so secret. many questions about your studio <laughs> and about you now um yeah but I mean it was for me coming off the season um it was so devastating and I got really bad heat stroke on the day that we had our blow slot and so I went to the medic and I lost bit of time and my assistant went for medic and we got we both got quite sick and so um you know having that and having like this bad day and having that feel like a reflection you don't know what it's going to look like on tv so I, I went through probably two months of just being really devastated in my eyes by my performance and it took quite a bit to turn around how I felt about that and it it, you know once I did I I think it it really changed my studio practice and everything but it just it took a big toll mentally at the time because I just felt like I just ruined my career because everyone was going to see me as this big failure and that I was going to come across as just an idiot that you know can't even get through because I think you know you like well, as long as I don't get go off first, like that's like your mentality. <laughs> and then you go off first and you're like, well, yeah, that happened. Um, <laughs> so. It's so crazy that they don't share the background of it. They had some ventilation problems and stuff at first. Wasn't that the case? So here's the thing. I think when I initially saw it, I was upset that nobody would see what happened, you know, what happened. I'm like, oh, my God, nobody knows. And so they're going to judge me based on something and they don't understand what happened. But you think about um, what they've done and I think it's pretty, to the, um, the producers have done a great job of making it about glass blowing and not about drama. And... If you look back, what could they have taken out to show that side of of what happened for me? And I think that it really, it it wouldn't have made the show any better. It wouldn't have done anything for, like, what they're trying to do in the show. It just would have created some sort of drama that didn't need to be there. And I think that it's actually really great that they didn't kind of touch on that. I think you know, from a personal note, it's totally different because, you know, I felt like, but I think since I had so much 
positivity come out of it, I, I, I probably have a different outlook than if people were trolling me. I mean, I only had like one or two trolls, you know, be nasty or rude or whatever, but I've had hundreds of people be lovely and sweet and positive and supportive. So I think for me, initially I felt kind of hard done by and then I kind of realised that it was actually, you know, it. I think that they did a, a good job and I think that it's really important that they do make it about glass falling and they don't make it about this crazy reality show where everyone's pitted against each other. You know, I think it's a really good thing for the glass community. Yeah, that's a great perspective. I actually think that the further along you make it in the show, the more trolls you probably get because then it gets to be more of a competition and then they feel like, oh, maybe somebody else should have won or something like that. Yeah, and I think it almost becomes more personal because people kind of really do um, feel like they've gotten to know you, even though if that's a false um super edited version (laughs) yeah it's still it still like feels like people are like oh well I know this person I know what they're like I've seen what they do and you know you've got like there were like hours and hours and hours and hours of filming and you know it's 33 minutes it's it's a drop in the ocean and like half of that was like introductions like that was the other thing you know being on that first episode having anything other than what they've shown I think it just it really would have been um it it wouldn't have been as good for the show I think that it's really important that um we were able to kind of have glass be and the process be the star of the show rather than some manufactured or you know dramatic circumstances can you can you tell us more about it? So you did your day in the hot shop and what was it like five hours or something? And I want to know about what happened with that. But then after, like it probably took a couple of days for the annealer to come down, right? And then they do the judging part. I um so they do so in between blowing glass and judging, you have a day of interviews. And you have a day of cold work, or not a day, you have half an hour of cold work, but you have like, you have, um, I can't remember, maybe it's an hour, half an hour. I, it was very short. It felt like it went like that. I dropped. Not enough I had, time. I'd made, I'd made <laughs> these buttons for the eyes and um, I was cold working it and it flicked out and underneath the um, the equipment. So I had the eyes would look more even if I'd like, it was just like all of these things. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> cold working under pressure is stupid. Um, <laughs> cold working is so slow too. I imagine that it was like a whole day of cold working. Yeah. So you go, you all go in there individually, you get all driven there and you have, you know, you have your time and you're like, your time starts now. And so you have to cold work and then put it on the plant and, so, you know, <laughs> you get given your cold working time and, you know, they pick you up from the hotel and they drop you off and you do your cold working and then you put on the plinth and then you, like, lament it how awful you did. Um, unless I you're Elliot, wish- you're just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost wish they showed that part that I totally get what you're saying where they're limited for an episode, but I almost wish that they like, cause from the public's perspective and from like my perspective, cause I get so much business from the blown away stuff, but everybody comes and they think that their glasses are ready immediately. It's just like magically cold out of the annealer and ready for action. I think I think it would be nice if they touched on it, if they mentioned it. And I, I totally agree. Like, I think it's sort of one of those things that it would be nice to kind of have some sort of mention of it because I think it's, um, yeah, it's a bit rough having people not understand the process. And I think it also devalues the process a little bit because people, they're like, oh, so you can make that in five hours cool so five hours divided by minimum wage equal you know times minimum wage is ah 
why is this stuff so much so expensive like you know <laughs> and you finish right. it and it's just done it's ready for judging it's on a pedestal perfect and you're yeah. like showered and clean and in fresh clothes ready for action yeah and you're like oh did you know that the you know it costs five hundred dollars a day to just be in the studio and then then there's like the time that we do that and then there's the cold working time and then there's like you know studio rental for my space where I have to store my stuff like you know I think it it, when you're an artist I think that there's an idea that there's going to be you know that you're, you're doing it for the love and you're doing it for the fun and you just pop in there and you just make something and then like we're like you know we we love it therefore we shouldn't get paid that much for it either, you know? Like, I think it's um, it's really tricky, for sure. What would have happened, like, if something cracks in the annealer too? You know, you spend all right. that time doing your piece, and it could still crack. Like, you don't even know if it's time. done. Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's also, like, the realities of glass. Like, and, you know, I think we've all had bad days in the hot shop, but you just, you know, you don't even think about that as something that could be like, um, important. Like it's never been important before, like to have a bad day in the hot shop because you just kind of pick it up and do something again or, um, yeah. It's just part of being a glass blower is having good and bad days, but then like you're in a new space and it's hot and all this trouble. Wait, so what happened? So you went in and your assistant and you both got sick. So, well, okay. So back on that bad day thing, I think people have bad days. It's not a glass blowing thing. Like people who are in an office job have a bad day and they screw up an email or whatever. Like, you know, they don't think about that in the same way, you know, um, you know, you'll have a, a plumber that'll make a mistake on a job and, you know, like they just have to spend a bit more time doing it. Or, you know, like I think it's not limited to glass lowers. I think we're just humans and that's just sort of how it is. Back to what you asked me. <laughs> um, so how did it all planned out? In hindsight, I should have just done it in clear because I ended up sandblasting anyway and, ugh. So, but I um I stuffed some cups to make it um and I had all of the bits in the annealer I uh, sorry in the garage and um as the time went on I felt more and more nauseous and dizzy and it was like the other thing with the studio it's you know there's these kind of little modifications that they make for the cameras so if you look again at like the shields, the shields are kind of cut out where your body is. <laughs> so, so you get like, they're just different. Like you have to have these modifications for TV, but they're different from a normal studio sort of setup. So um, my, my hole was kind of surrounded by the other holes. It was like in the middle of the studio. So it was a little bit, um, yeah, it was just, it was just, I think it, it seemed, and it, and it, when I kind of went around the other side and it could just be my perception too like this is just how it felt but I I've never been in a like in a studio and felt so hot the first time I blew glass it was 110 degrees um in Australia and I've never felt so hot in a hot shop as I have then like I'm I'm an Australian glass law so it's you know it's like really shocking to me at how hot that was and then um I started just feeling sick and you know the wet towels came out and I had the Gatorade the wet towel and- thing was so funny to me because it looked like, like you were sports people <laughs> <laughs> and it got to this point where I was just like I'm gonna faint so I went out to the medic um and so my assistant my poor assistant was flashing the piece and waiting for me yeah (laughs) and so I'm like I'm laying on the floor and I'm like I if this was a normal day I would have called it quits like there's no way I would have kept glass you know blowing glass but I'm just like it's a competition I've got to do this I've got to get this done and so I went back and I was like sweet let's get back into it 
feel very sick still, but I'm just going to go for it. And my assistant was like, oh, I don't feel good. And so she had to leave. So then I'm flushing my face. And so the way it looks on TV is like, I'm just like, do, 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 making stuff, making stuff. And like three seconds to go, I'm like, crap, I've got to go to get this. So it looks like I'm like the worst like time management person in the world. And I'm like, it was like, I'm like, five hours, five hours, five hours. Oh my God, I've got 30 seconds left. I've got to put it together. And you know, like that's just kind of the way that that, that cadence and that kind of increase kind of goes. And um, yeah, it's just, it was, it felt um, a bit different, but yeah, it was just a bad day. Like I just, I wasn't concentrating as well as I could and I wasn't doing things and I made stupid decisions too like I made totally dumb decisions stuffing cups why, why I was just that? thinking that I mean why? it's awesome I'll admit it I think it's totally cool but so you stuffed a cup for the body and the head and the arms and the legs I stuffed a cup for all of the bits like the the head and the body like I, I made little kind of like whatever the equivalent of a solid supio is um I'm pissed they didn't show that part Right, <laughs> been an epic video. And then I like, and then so then I made all the parts, and then I made those parts into the. It was just a really dumb way of doing it. I don't know what like what was going through my head, but I think what was going through my head was like five hours, heaps of time, um, idiot. So. <laughs> And then, <laughs> well, we also mm. always want to try and do like the most ambitious thing because you're like, I can do a stuffed cup. It's fine. Like, this is fine. I'm going <laughs> like, to win this with my stuffed cup. <laughs> and so, you know, and then like, and then like, I don't really torch work. It's torch work in the hot shop. I hadn't used a torch like for, like, I didn't really done stringer work. And I was like, yeah, I'll just do stitching stitching in the the, the the heart and I'll be stitching in the bear and it'll be great so I spent like way too much time doing little stitches through the heart and then um yeah so I just made those dumb decisions um and if I'd had more time then I could have refined like the proportions of the bear and done all of that stuff and I made these little buttons for the eyes, as I said, that just didn't work out. Um, but, yeah, I just, I think I made a lot of silly, mis- mis- like, decisions. Um, and I know how I'd do it again if I was to do it again. That would be better. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just give you props for, like, even putting yourself <laughs> in that position, like, so strong. <laughs> but Wait. really, like. There was no cringe moments for me when Mm-mm. I was like, I had to sit down in the morning it came out and watch it like straight through the first very yeah. first day. And I was like getting ready to like feel like I was dying inside for you. And like there was not one moment where I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. It actually went quite well, I thought. <laughs> Thank you. It was like, it's funny. I like, there was part of me when it came out that I wanted to like, tell everyone that I was sick and that they didn't understand and and I was like no I don't I don't think that I need to do that and I don't think that that's people didn't need to know you know I think you know that was just it was just the situation that happened and it wasn't really it didn't matter and I think that it probably would have made me look like I was um kind of making excuses and I didn't think that that was really what I wanted to do I think I just wanted to like acknowledge that you know back to the 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 making the teddy bears and kind of going through that process that just I wanted something positive to come out for other people to show that you can have a bad day and it's it's fine like you can have a bad day on international television which is going to be on you know Netflix for all time um and it's okay like it's it's fine and you don't have to make excuses like you don't have to like explain yourself you can things things happen you know 
shit happens. It didn't even seem like it was that bad of a day from my perspective. From my perspective, it just felt like it just like is a hot shop time. Like you just ran out of time and you just mm-hmm. weren't able to kind of make your vision perfectly, you know? Yeah. I think I'm just like, I'm a perfectionist and, you know, like most of us are. And I, I think I would have felt better about, like, I wouldn't have gone in such a deep, um, hit of depression after the show if I'd felt like I'd done the best that I could but I just you know there were people that were better and you know I'd done the best that I could and I had a friend when it came out like I watched it with a friend and he said to me oh you don't need to feel bad like all those people were so good and I'm like think you're missing the point like it's not about how good the other people were it's about how badly I performed in my in the way that I feel like in what I know that I can do and if I had if I genuinely felt like I had put the best version of myself on that plane and it still got judged badly I wouldn't care like I mean I'd care but I'd be like I'd be proud of my you know that moment and I'm proud that I did it and I'm, you know, don't get me wrong. I just, you I just got wish. up that- off of that floor. I know. And I was just went gonna back say. in. Like I, maybe you could have just given up, you know, like yeah, you followed but- through with it and used all your time. I just feel like I wish that, you know, I could have something on that print plane that I, represented me because that's how it felt like that was the representation of me to the rest of the world and it wasn't what I wanted to represent that's that's what really upset me um and so I ended up um a lot of that clay sculpture that I'd made I hadn't done clay for like 20 years and so I started doing all this clay sculpture and I started doing like (laughs) all these like things with like how long did you, so you, the challenge happened and did you have time to like sit and do that or this was part of your time that you did these? Yeah, things? we had, we had, yeah, we had time to sit and do that because you've got to set up for like, um, you know, the sketching part, like, and they don't have enough um, spaces for everyone to sketch on the, you know, they've got five camera guys, so they need to make sure that you've got like, each person's got very specific, yeah. It's, it's all kind of done like that. So this is this is after Blown Away. This is kind of basically how I was feeling. So it was these this kind of feeling of just not, you know, failing and feeling like I was just like deep. Oh, that wasn't a sad one. But I kind of went and I got a little bit more upbeat and went back to sadness. Um but I kind of went through and I wanted to make these sculptures where I like looked at, you know, how, like I just wanted to physically manifest how I was feeling at the time. So yeah, that was kind of, that shows you my headspace. So, so um, beautiful and, and so sad, you. but so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so then, how did you yeah. get through that? Was it just time or just keep creating or a little bit of everything? I really think that ceramics really did a lot for that. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I was sitting in the coffee shop um, and I'd just sketch and, and it was hard because I couldn't talk about it, you know, you like, in most things in life, you go through this really devastating period of your life. You've got the ability to talk to your friends about it and talk about what happened. And I didn't have that. I had, you know, we'd signed NDAs and I couldn't tell people that I'd even been on the show, let alone that this like monumental life thing had happened to me. And, you know, I just was in this like state of depression where I just, like, you know, People didn't even know that I'd gone to Canada, you know, like it was, <laughs> you know. And so it was like, like a year, right? There, It was almost yeah. a year. 
it was a year until it came out and so I'm like you know I I, I spoke a little bit to um some of the other contestants about it um because I had them because we could talk about it but because they were there but you know for the most part I felt kind of like I was just going at it alone and I just you know made these um these sculptures and that kind of was a bit of therapy for me um but yeah I think I just I got through it eventually but it just took time it was really a couple of months until I was you know feeling good and then once that period of time ended um it really kind of re-energized my art practice and um I had a little dip when the show was coming up because I started getting like really nervous because you have no idea like I knew that I wasn't gonna look like once I you know I can start telling people about it once they released like the pictures of us on the show you know and I was telling my friends I'm like I'm not gonna look nasty or mean or like I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna come across like I know based on what happened like there'd have to be some extreme editing to happen for them to make me look like that I'm like I'm sure they could but why would they um but I'm like I just I'm I was so scared that I was gonna look incompetent you know um and that was my biggest fear and it was like I think those, you know, those reality TV shows, when it's about you, you can just be like, yeah, well, they don't know me. You know, like they don't know me. They just know what's represented, da, da, da. But when it's like, when it's an art piece on a plinth, like that's that's me. That is me. You know, like that's that's like representing me. It's not just like they've like misrepresented my personality or like, you know, they didn't, they've like edited in a side glance or a glare or me like, like yelling profanities, but that. like not towards somebody, but it looks like, you know, somebody else makes an expression and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's just like, that's one of those things that they can edit in. But like, when it's like, you've made something, I'm like, oh my God, everyone's going to think I'm so incompetent. And I think it's one of the other things that's really hard is that that bear has connected with a lot of people and it means a lot to a lot of people and it has once it's connected with somebody it's kind of hard to 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 tell someone well I hate it you know like I don't like what I've made because it kind of um invalidates their feelings about that piece and so I've been really careful about you know when when anybody says anything about it especially if they're like oh my god I love it so much it like means everything to me and da, 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 and I can I buy it from you like for me I have to sort of hold my tongue a little bit and be like I'm really glad that that connected with you like I'm I'm really happy that I've made something that has meant something to you and that has made you feel something and that's really important to me what I don't say is like but I, I hate that hate it. I want it to be thrown <laughs> in the river you know like my it's, it's like my dreams and nightmares collided when it got to the Corning Museum of Glass because you know like that's a that's a lifelong dream who doesn't want their glass to be at the Corning Museum of Glass but it's that bloody bear. Like, like can I make a new bear and just replace <laughs> it? <laughs> Anyone want to like break into Corning and <laughs> replace my bear? So, do you guys get to keep the piece afterwards? Is it so? How does that work? Um. So when you sign your contracts, it's it, it's all owned by the production company. Um, we have. Um, we have an agreement with them that if we make anything from the show that um, yeah there's like there's agreements in place for all of that but I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk about that but yeah it's it's fine probably a way they make money yeah Um, so did you find that 
it helped you though? So let's say you got through your depression, you used your ceramics and you're back into glass. And what are the beautiful things that came out of the show besides the people that really connect with your beautiful, beautiful bear? I think, I mean, for the wider glass glass community, like that has been incredible that so many more people are interested in glass. I think that that's just such a wonderful thing for everybody. Um, the friendships that I've gotten, like the people that were on the show, best people ever, like just such amazing, wonderful people. And we've still got a little group chat and, you know, just really genuine, sweet, lovely humans. And I was expecting there to be like this, like competition and everyone just wanted to do their best, you know? Um, and so that's been pretty amazing. Um, extra Instagram followers. That's pretty great. Like just having more people that are interested in your work. And I think it's, there's like something kind of nice about the fact that I think some people come to my page because on the show, I'm like, I'm a better glass lower than this. And I'm sure people are like, yeah, sure you are. And then they go along my page and they're like, oh. Yeah, like pleasantly surprised. Like she's not like totally full of it. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, like your work right. speaks like, for itself, that's for sure. <laughs> she's not she's not totally terrible. But like I think, you know, being able to like connect with more people and um yeah, I think just to be able to show some people what I can do and I mean back to like people on the show being so supportive you know I've had other contestants like do shout outs about me and they don't have to do that but they've got like bigger platforms than I do and they do a shout out to me and I just I'm so humbled by it um because you know it makes people kind of look at my work and you know they've got so much stuff going on because they've been so successful from the show and I can't imagine how little time they've got um which is great like I'm so proud of them and I'm so happy for them that they can you know can do all of that and you know I'm hoping to get to a point where I can just make my glass and that you know everything sells and everything like that um but I'm really glad that like at this point that like some of the contestants have just just gone leaps and bounds from this and it's just so wonderful yeah I think it's really cool to watch them too I love following Kat and her success and um I was wondering more about what you're doing now in the studio space just like the practicalities of it so you're all sharing this space and you're working to build a body of work and um I guess that first of all, I was wondering how the space is going to work. Is it just going to work for you all to create or are you going to open it up to other artists or maybe classes or? So most of the studios in Melbourne um, kind of operate in the same way where um, people own a studio and so then they're like the primary user of the studio and then they'll rent out to glass blowers you know some are a little bit more um like selective than others like they it's kind of not like a an open whoever wants to go I think actually for the most part most people won't just rent their studio out to anyone um you know that you sort of have to know the people and kind of um have some trust in you know that you're not gonna mess around with your equipment um and so you know, obviously when they've got production work or if they've got artwork that they have to make, it's their studio. So they'll be using it for the most part. Um, and then we can kind of rent around that. Um, so, you know, my my um, my space includes a couple of hours of cold working a week uh, and then I can, you know, pay extra for the hot truck or anything else. So... That's cool to hear how that like community space works. Mm. So we've got, I mean, there's um, in Melbourne, I'm going to forget, I don't want to like name people because I'll probably forget like a studio and then I'll feel really bad. 
but there's <laughs> one, two, three. There's a few um, different studios in Melbourne. Um, quite a few people's furnaces are off right now because in summer they turn off a bit warm. Um, the Gordons, um, they're on at the moment, obviously. Um, Ruth Allen, who I also work for, she's on um, at the moment. So, um, but she's melting colour at the moment, which is pretty fun. So I'm going to... I need to stuff a cup. Nah. Yep. If only Blown Away had a colour fence. Or if I just was clear and sandblast it like a... They should just do it in Corning. Like, come on now. Yeah, I'm a bit of a knob. Remake, you're going to have a remake demo at Corning. That's... <laughs> Ooh, you should start putting in applications or stuff like that. That would be really cool. I, well, I'm I'm going to be demoing at Gas. I'm doing a live demo at Gas. So I think I might put it do? out to my... Wow. Funny you should ask that. I think I might put it out to my IG followers <clears throat> and, you know give them a an either or option like what do you want to see me make because I think it would be like one of my encased objects or uh, an anatomical figure um and I don't know what people would like to see more what's what's your suggestion I like the anatomical figures yeah right I think I like the encased things oh see this is why I need the IG thing <laughs> <laughs> think you're gonna make any of your sad anatomical figures or you don't want to revisit that feeling um i don't think that i'd make them out of glass because i think that that whole process is very cathartic um and it was a, like the having it as a slow process because i think the hot shots just a different feeling you know i think i get i I don't use the hot shop to move through things. You know, I think I'm, I'm always happier once I get to touch hot glass and do things, but I don't think that I like utilize the hot shop in the same way that I do when I'm drawing. Like I, I think drawing is very meditative for me. Um, and same with sculpting. Cause I think like clay, it's very individual and it's very quiet and it's very just me. When I'm in the hot shop, there's another person there. And so I don't, there's like a social aspect where I don't think that I should be feeling my feelings or processing my feelings. Like this is not how I work in the hot shop. Like I want that to be a really positive environment for my assistant as well. And so it's really important to me that my assistant's really happy during the making of my pieces. I know that's like, <laughs> shouldn't like, but I just like, if I'm, if I'm, worried that my assistants are having a good time then I won't work as well so you know I, I really want to make sure that my assistant is having fun that I'm not annoying them that I'm not like snapping at them or you know because sometimes you you have a, a a short burst or a you know you're sort of quick with somebody and you're like all right well oh my God, what did I say? Did I upset them? Like, da, da, da. And then I can't focus on my work. So I think for me having like a really positive environment in the hot shop is just always been really important to me. Mm, I could totally see that. Yeah. I also feel like it's kind of tough to be vulnerable when you're like worrying so much about being like safe and making sure that the work that you're producing is coming out how you want it to. Whereas like yeah. making drawing or something like that is more like low key. <laughs> oh, and not so expensive. Yeah, like it's, it's, so it's like dropping right. like, like, you know, it's, it's like, it's bad enough when you like make it prototyping and you're like, I wonder if this is going to work, da, 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 but you're still kind of having fun. Um, like doing experimental stuff. Like I'm not that rich. Maybe one day I'll like, I don't know. I, I'm going to marry a very well-off human and they're just going to be like, here, would you like, would you like a couple of thousand dollars to play around in the hot shop? I'd be like, yes, please. Thank you. I'll just mess around. It's going to be fun. 
Yeah, no, we just interviewed this man and he has been doing it for his whole life and he was burning out. So he took all of his savings and told his assistants, he's like, for the next three months, all we're going to do is play. And he's like, if at the end of these three months, we have nothing to show for it, then I'm out of the business, basically. Wow. So impressive. So ballsy. And he, he actually did like it turned his whole life around. Yeah, right. Well, I think before Blown Away, I I think I was feeling a bit burnt out. And I think I was feeling like, I think, you know, back to when we spoke last about, you know, success and, you know, I had these big bodies of work and I still do and they don't sell. And you think about how many, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that you've just like dropped like other people have houses and you know holidays and stuff and you have this bunch of glass sculpture that nobody wants and you're like why why am I doing this like do I want more stuff in my house like what like what I I don't I don't even look, look at this stuff anymore like it's just everywhere and I don't know where we store it and why am I making more stuff? You know, like, and so I think that was kind of where I was at. Um, and I was feeling really burnt out and I was feeling like nobody wanted my work and not that everyone wants my work now, but like, <laughs> I, I think, you know, I, I felt like I just was pretty close to failure and like just I couldn't see the point in continuing doing it and then blown away happened and it kind of just re-sparked that love um and that need to make and I kind of figured out you know what I wanted to revisit and what I wanted to sort of work on because it's like that goes back to that thing where you just don't want to experiment too much because you don't want to spend all of that money you might want to go to Europe or something you know I have a random question you don't get paid anything to be on blown away right so that's all just like vacation time or did they give you like a little bit of a stipend or something to survive a little stipend yeah but like it like it did cost me to like kind of to do all of that and it's really hard because you're like, you go to your boss and you're like, um, I need one to eight weeks off. Or no, two to eight weeks. I think it's like two weeks was the minimum. It's like, I need two to eight weeks off, please. I don't know if it's going to be two or eight weeks. I can let you know later. Like, I was and working at the gym at the time. You still have to pay your bills too. Like, you still have to yeah. pay everything. Yeah. And I like, I had all my clients and you know, like clients don't necessarily want to stick around if you go away for two months. Like you can lose clients. And I was just like, well, um, can't tell you why, but I'm going to be going away for a bit. Might be back in a couple of weeks. You'll actually find out in a year. (laughs) (laughs) Like I had a a client last week that just like sent me a, a screenshot and was like, I think you did really well. Oh, <laughs> so we got, like, got people like dribbling in, being like, "I just watched it. I cried." Huh. <laughs> I hope that positive things come from that for a long time for you, because mm-hmm. I really don't think that what people make matters or what people place matters. I just think, like you said, the first episode is a whole bunch of interviews and you're just sitting there facing a camera and talking. And I think that just builds on your career too. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like, I was so, and the other thing is I think that first episode is probably like up there with being, I think probably like the first and the last are probably the hardest or the maybe the last like couple and then the first because the first you've just got all these jitters and you just kind of like figuring out like you've got this camera dude like you know you're dropping your bubble and there's a camera dude there and you're like I don't know where to be I don't know what to do and like like 
And then I just like, I'm all nervous. So I'm telling jo- like jokes to the camera guy. I'm like, so uh, what's the difference between a large pizza and a glass blower? Have you heard this joke? Large pizza can feed a family of four. <laughs> Good one. <That's> true. <laughs> So, you know, like, I'm like, I'm like, but, but, but I was singing Teddy Bear Picnic at the time too. Like, I looked like a loon. That was the other thing I was a bit worried about was that because I was messing around and dancing and my sister and I were singing and we were just, like, screwing around. Not screwing around, but, like, we were having fun. And so I was really worried that they were going to show that and then me, like, they were going to be like, la, 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 and then, like, Oh my god, five seconds left! Like, and so people are gonna be like, "Of course she screwed up. She was just she wasn't even quite paying attention." Like, but that's kind of how I am in the hot shop. Like, I'm a bit of a, a an idiot. Like, we'll sing and dance, and you know, if I'm having a good day in the hot shop, I'm dancing at the glory hole, um, because that's just kind of how I am. But oh, that was the other thing with perception that I was worried about that people were gonna be like, "Well." She can't even concentrate on what she's doing. But it was just so tense in there too. And I just wanted to break that tension. And as I said, I wanted my assistant to be having a good time because that makes me be a better glass blower. What was your assistant like? Do you still connect with them? She's so amazing. Robin Ritter. um, She makes these really cute sculptures with like um, insects and stuff. And she was just so positive and helpful and sweet and like she's giving me these hugs like we like put the piece away and we weren't allowed to leave the hot shop until like they had a camera guy there watching the walkout and so like we put the piece away and she's just like holding me (laughs) because I was devastated (laughs) she was probably so scared too right no she, well, that was her second time she's been on it. She was on the first series as well. So fortunately she'd kind of gone through that process before, I believe. Um, but, yeah, she was just, she was so great. Such a great human and great assistant. And I was really grateful that I had her. I mean, I think, I'm sure they're all great. But, you know, I, I think I could have asked for a better, better person, more helpful and She's just such a sweetheart and she just made me smile the whole time. Oh, that's so good to hear. Well, thanks for spending so much time with us and sharing all this personal stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, um, no worries. Um, Yeah, it's, I mean, I haven't really talked about um, Blown Away to this extent with anyone. So it's um, pretty interesting and I hope that it's, um, yeah, I hope people, um, maybe it brings something extra to to people and I hope it doesn't kind of ruin it for anyone, <laughs> you I know, I like, because so. I, I think, you know, because maybe it'll change how they see that episode or, but, you know, that's not kind of my intention um, and I'm not trying to um, make anyone sort of feel anything different towards me. It's just sort of, you know, what happened in, and where I was at at the time. A little inside perspective into your brain. I'm sure that mm-hmm. everybody else had like all these different panic moments too throughout. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was like, you know, there were times and they didn't show everyone like breaking pieces and stuff. Like that was the other thing. So that was my experience. But other people on the first episode, um, they were doing really well and then their piece broke and not just Brad's because you saw Brad's happen, but there was another person that had the same thing. It's sort of not my place to talk about who it is, but, you know, somebody else got um, quite sick as well um, and, you know, they didn't show that. Like um, obviously those people got through, so, you know, didn't um, – you can have these things happen and it not affect you the same way, so I, I don't – by any means think that I you know I was hard done by or anything like I I think that that's I think that's what I want to make clear is that I don't think that I like I don't feel hard done by I just think I had a bad day um 
and um, you know other people had um, things happen and everyone was trying to get used to a new studio and different assistants and they were trying to deal with um, deal with these things so um, yeah thank you so much yeah thank you nice to see you guys again Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Connected in Glass. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more information on the artists we interview and for updates on the podcast.